guys, my name is Gabby and welcome back to the channel. In 2023, which is now this year, I am going to attempt all 2,198-ish miles of the Appalachian Trail. Not entirely sure, the number just changed. So in today's video, I want to talk about this. This is my backpack and all of the gear inside of it that I'm going to need to hike the Appalachian Trail. For any of you that don't know, this is my second attempt at the Appalachian Trail and last year I completed around 700 miles. During those 700 miles, I had plenty of time to learn what gear did work for me and which gear didn't work. While I've swapped out a lot of my gear items, I've also kept some of the same essentials, so I can't wait to show this to you guys. Now I'm going to try to keep my explanations for each of the objects in my pack for this video pretty brief, just because there are so many objects in here that it would probably take forever to film a video where I go into full detail on everything. If you are looking for some more detailed reviews, I do have a clothing video that I published last week, and I've also talked about my big three in another video as well. So yeah, feel free to go check those out, um, but for now, we're going to dive right into this and it's going to be a lot. We will start by talking about items that are not in the backpack, but items that I'll actually have on me. So one of the most important things that I'll be carrying with me are my trekking poles. These are Lucky trekking poles. Um, they're not ultra light. They are kind of heavy, but they are also super durable. They are collapsible, so you can adjust them to the height that you need. And I used these trekking poles on the Appalachian Trail last year, and they worked great, no problems at all. Um, tips are still looking good, so love these poles. They do have a cork handle, and I did get the women's version, so they fit a woman's hand a little bit better. Okay, so next are my shoes, and I talked about these in a lot more detail on my clothing video. Um, but these are the Topo Mountain Racer 2. I really like these shoes because they have a wide toe box, so plenty of room for the toes to spread out, and they also have pretty sticky tread. Next we'll move on to the clothes that I plan on wearing while I'm hiking. So this is a buff, and basically I'll just wear this buff around my head to keep my hair out of my face. For my hiking pants, I have a pair of REI brand hiking pants. These are really good pants because they're lightweight, they're water resistant, and they didn't cost a fortune, so that's nice. Under those pants, I'll be wearing some REI base layers, and that's really just to help keep me warm. And then my hiking top is a Smart Wool uh, Merino 150 base layer shirt. I wore this shirt for probably like 500 miles-ish on the AT last year, and I loved it. Of course, I'll be wearing some underwear, a sports bra, and some darn tough socks. For my mid layer, I will be wearing this Appalachian Gear Company hoodie. So it's really lightweight and it's also really warm and I've heard it's supposed to be really warm when it gets wet. And one of the best things in my opinion is that it doesn't hold on to any smells so you don't have to worry about that nasty hiker funk when you wear it. In addition to those items, I'll also have my iPhone 13 Pro on me, and I'm using that to film right now, so can't show you guys that. All right, so now we can move on to the backpack stuff. So I spent all morning loading all this stuff up. Um, I will say I do think I'm missing a couple items, and I'll mention those things as we go. And some of this, such as my first aid kit, um, is actually just whatever was left over in it from my previous through hike attempt. So what all is in there is going to be a surprise to both you guys and myself. When I weighed my backpack this morning with everything in it, it came out to 15 pounds. There's definitely going to be some items that I can probably take out to cut weight and then also some items that I'm probably going to want to add. So that base weight is going to fluctuate, but overall I'd say 15 pounds is probably a good estimate for what my base weight is going to be. So we'll start by talking about the pack itself. This is the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60 liter backpack. I got the Vaporwave edition, which is why it's super fun colors. I think normally the Gossamer gear is like either a gray or a greenish color. And one of my favorite things about this backpack is that it just has a ton of external storage space. So as y'all can see, we have this really big backpack right here. We have a really big side pocket over here. And then on this side, we actually have two pockets. So here's what the back of the pack looks like. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is actually a sit pad. 
So if you want, you can take this sit pad out and you can use it for hanging out around camp and then put it back in here um, as padding for your back when you're hiking. I've heard that this sit pad's pretty hard to take out. I probably won't mess with it, but who knows, maybe it'll come in handy. This backpack also has a metal internal frame inside of it, so it's not a frameless pack. On the front of the pack, I have this little cell phone pouch that actually came with the backpack, so it matches. And in this pouch right here, I have my Zolio. So Zolio is very similar to a Garmin and Reach Mini, if any of you guys have heard of that. But basically, it's a satellite communicator. You can use it to text from your phone when you don't have cell phone service. And you also can use it to send daily check-ins to your friends and family. But most importantly, you can hit this SOS button in here if you find yourself in an emergency while out in the backcountry. So a satellite device is not something that you obviously have to carry on an Appalachian Trail through hike. It's just something that gives me and my family peace of mind. And I enjoy sending them a quick message, especially when I get to camp and there's no cell phone service. I remember when I was going through the Smokies, I pretty much used this thing every single day. And I also used it to check the weather when I couldn't get cell phone service for days on end. So I definitely recommend it. The Zolio is, I think, about half the price of the Garmin InReach Mini. But you do have to have your cell phone on you to send actual text messages. As far as hitting the SOS button, you don't need your cell phone though. As long as this is charged and going, you should be good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna open this up. So in here is something that I have not decided if I will be taking with me on my hike or not. This is a 360 camera. It is called the Insta360 X2. This camera is really cool because it gives you a 360 degree view of your surroundings and you can capture some really cool shots with it. I've not messed with it a ton and I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna bring it on the trail with me or not. I have a really awesome trip coming up and I think that that vacation is gonna be the perfect time for me to test out this camera. This camera weighs a little bit less than a pound, so it's not super heavy, but it is definitely something to consider if I actually want to carry it or not. This camera also comes with its own tripod, which is actually a really neat tripod. So basically you can press this button down here and extend it into a tripod, but also it is a full length tripod. So I could get shots not only like closer to the ground, but also ones that are higher up. And the really neat thing about the combination of this tripod and this Insta360 camera is that when you're shooting videos and you're holding it up kind of like this, the camera actually knows how to cut the tripod out of the shot. So it kind of allows your footage to look like drone footage. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, like I said, I don't know if this is something that I'm bringing with me or not. Um, last year I only used my phone to film videos and I didn't even carry a tripod for most of the trail. So this is definitely extra weight to carry that I don't necessarily need, but if I think it's gonna make my videos a lot better, then I'm gonna try it. All right, so moving on to the other shoulder strap. So this is a Z-Pax water bottle holder. I used a water bottle holder on the trail last year, but it was just a cheap one that I got off Amazon. And it was falling apart and rusting really bad, and it was also pretty heavy for what it was. Um, so I went ahead and got one from Z-Pax. It basically weighs nothing, but it allows you to have your water right here. That way you stay nice and hydrated throughout the day. So now I'm going to show you all what's in my hip belt pockets, but I'm going to put my bag down because it's kind of heavy. I always leave one hip belt pocket open for snacks, and then I use the other ones to carry essentials that I need throughout the day. In the hip belt pocket right now, I have some sunscreen, I have chapstick, I have my phone wallet, my AirPods, my mini Swiss army knife, and some pepper spray that I may or may not take with me. All right, moving on. So now we'll start talking about the outside pockets. So in this pocket, I have a Gossamer Gear 1 8 inch foam pad. I didn't really carry anything like this on the trail last year, but there was a lot of times where I wish I would have. This foam pad only weighs like three ounces, I think. And it gives you a really good place to sit down and eat lunch. It's also really nice to put under your sleeping pad so that your sleeping pad doesn't roll around your tent as much. And it can protect your sleeping pad in shelters so that you don't have to worry about putting a hole in your inflatable pad. 
Let's see what else I have in this pocket. Okay, this. So this is actually a trekking pole extender. If any of you guys watched my big three video, you already know about my tent situation. But long story short, I'm not really sure if I have the Z-Pax Altiplex or the Z-Pax Plex Solo. I think it's the Altiplex, so I think I need this trekking pole extender because my trekking pole is not quite long enough for the tent. That is something that I need to do a lot more experimenting with. I need to see like what the ideal height is to set up my tent. But more than likely, I'm going to need this on the trail because my trekking poles are not that tall. And tent stakes. And you can literally hear the dirt in the bag. I definitely need to go through this bag and sort out how many tent stakes I need and which ones I'm going to use because I think there's just like a bunch of random ones in here. All right, so that's it for that pocket. Now we will move on to the front pocket. Well, I guess first of all, um, hand sanitizer. This is something that you always need on the trail. I like to keep mine right here on the outside of my bag. That way it's really easy to access and I always know where it's at. On this side of the bag, I have my Kula cloth. This is essentially just a pee rag, but it's antimicrobial. Microbial? Yeah. Honestly, I think this might be one of my all time favorite pieces of gear. Okay, so back to the front pocket. So the first thing I have in here is my camp shoes. Let me get them out. I got these camp shoes at a Walgreens one time randomly at Miami Beach, and they are by far the lightest pair of shoes that I own. The only bad side to these shoes is they literally have no traction whatsoever, so they're pretty dangerous if you're trying to wear them around camp. And one time when I was in Hot Springs last year, I actually had a stick go completely through the bottom of the shoe and come out the top, which I'm not sure if you guys can see that on camera or not. The only reason I even carry camp shoes is because when I'm staying at hostels, I don't like to go into the showers without having something on my feet. If it wasn't for that, I would not carry camp shoes at all. When I started the AT last year, I didn't have camp shoes and I didn't find it to be a problem for me. So also in this front pocket, I have my Frog Togs rain jacket. So I always like to keep it in the front of my bag. That way it's accessible whenever I need it. And then moving on to this side. And all this is likely to change, by the way. When I'm on trail, I usually figure out what works best for me. So in here, I have some toilet paper. And this toilet paper is actually left over from the AT last year. So yeah. In this pocket down here is typically where I will keep my extra smart water bottle. I don't have any of those right now, but that will be right here. And then I'll also have what I need for filtering water. So this is my CNOC bag. I tried cleaning it, but it's still a little bit gross from the AT last year. This is another one of those things that you don't really need to have to hike the AT because you can screw your filter usually onto your water bottle. But I found that it just made life easier because I could go down to a stream, fill this up, and then just carry it back up to my tent or the shelter or wherever I was staying and then filter the water later. Speaking of filters, I have a Sawyer Squeeze. So last year on the AT, I used the Sawyer Squeeze Micro, and that worked pretty good, but I kind of just wanted a faster flow rate this year, and that filter was nasty anyways and also broken, so it was time to upgrade it. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention. So this backpack, I'll show you guys. It's got a little tiny pouch up here on the top of it, I don't know that I'm gonna use this for much, but right now, well, if I can get it. Right now I have my rain mints up here, um, and I just wanna keep these on the outside of my pack so that I can get to them easily when it's raining. So yeah, these are z Packs brand, and basically they just keep your hands dry when it's cold and raining outside. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the inside of the backpack. So the very first thing I have in my backpack sitting on the top is my tent. This is either the Z-Pax Altiplex or the Z-Pax Plex Solo, I'm not really sure. If you want to hear the full story behind that, go check out my Big 3 video. But regardless of what this tent actually is, I can tell you that it is a Z-Pax single wall trekking pole tent. 
and it does weigh a total of 15 ounces, so a lot lighter than the tent I used on the Appalachian Trail last year. So I don't have a pack cover for this Gossamer gear bag. Um, luckily, it is a pretty thin material, so I'm not really worried about water um, making the pack really heavy. But it's not a waterproof pack, and I don't want my gear inside the pack to get wet. Inside the pack, I keep a trash bag. Um, I used one of these on the Appalachian Trail last year and nothing in my bag ever got wet. I honestly think this trash bag weighs like five or six ounces, so it's pretty heavy, but it's also really strong and heavy duty. Okay, so the first thing I have in my bag after my tent, obviously, is my puffy coat. And this probably won't be on the top when I'm on trail, it just is right now because that's the way I packed it. This is the Enlightened Equipment torrid jacket. It has a synthetic insulation. Um, it's pretty lightweight, but it's also really warm. I would say this jacket is definitely warmer than the 650 down jacket that I used on the trail last year. And it also has a hood, so that's another thing I didn't have last year, and this is really important to trap in your body heat and keep you nice and toasty. So, really like this jacket. So the next thing I have in here is what I use for my food bag. This is what I used last year on the Appalachian Trail. It's basically just a Sea to Summit 20 liter dry bag. A lot of people do use Dyneema bags and I think they're a little bit lighter and also a little bit tougher, but this bag worked just fine for me. Now I will say I don't know if I'm going to be using this bag on the Appalachian Trail this year or not. This is definitely a huge debate right now. But in place of the bag, I might end up switching to a bear can. So this is the Bear Vault 475. I do believe it's a newer size. I think before they had a Bear Vault 500 and then a Bear Vault, bleh, bear vault 450. And I want to say the 450 only held like a couple days of food and then the 500 held maybe up to a week's worth of food. From my understanding, this bear can is supposed to work for around four to six days of food. When I was thinking about doing the Foothills Trail, I did try to pack six days of food in here and it was pretty tight. So I'm considering carrying this bear can just because um, bears on the Appalachian Trail are becoming a much bigger issue. And then I personally really hated throwing a bear line. But this thing is really heavy. It is really bulky. I'm not going to go into like full detail of doing the pros and cons of a bear bag or a bear can, but if you guys are interested in that, let me know. That is a video that I might make in the future. And like I said, right now, I don't know if I'm leaning towards the bear bag or the bear can, but I will definitely let you all know. Anyways, back to the food bag. So let's open it up. So this is basically how big the bag is. And as you can see, there is so much room for food in here. If I choose to carry this bear bag, um, I'm also going to need some paracord, so this is what you use to hang your bag in a tree. And I'm also going to need a rock sack, so this is literally just like a anchor bag. I used this as a rock sack on the trail last year, and it worked perfectly. If any of you are not familiar with the PCT method, I will leave a link um, down below so you can learn it. It is really important to learn to keep bears away from your food, but I do know that even some skilled bears can get down a bag hung using the PCT method. So another thing that I have in here is my Sea to Summit long-handled spork. A lot of people will prefer to use a spoon, but I personally like using a spork. And really that's just because I think that ramen noodles are too hard to eat with just a spoon. I also have my Sea to Summit collapsible cup. So this is definitely a luxury item. Um, it probably weighs around two ounces, but it's something that I really enjoy. I really like using this to drink some hot chocolate, tea, or coffee in camp. Now I also have my Tokes 550 milliliter pot. A lot of people think that this pot is too small, but it works perfectly for me. I will say that I don't cook in this pot, I only use it to heat up water. And most of the time I do the freezer bag cooking method. For my stove, I use the BRS. So this is a tiny little backpacking stove. You can get it for really cheap on Amazon. I'm not entirely sure how much they cost now, but when I bought mine, I know that it was around $15. 
and it definitely works. The only downside to this stove is that it's pretty small, so it can be a little bit unstable. And then sometimes it can struggle in the wind and it can be a little bit unpredictable in general, but for the weight savings, I definitely recommend this stove and I think it's worth it. To light your stove, you need a lighter. So I always carry a full-sized Bic lighter with me on the trail. A lot of people carry the mini lighters, which is also perfectly fine, but they do run out faster. And I found that when it was really cold outside, I would have a hard time uh, using my fingers to light it just because it was so little. So one thing that I don't currently have that I do need to buy is a fuel canister. I will put a little clip in this video now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But that's what you use to fuel your stove and to cook your food. Those weigh around four to five ounces when they're brand new, so I'll have to add that into my current weight situation. Okay, so that's it for food and cooking. Okay, so now the fun part. Um, I basically call this my junk bag. This is basically all of the small items that I have with me on the trail. Um, I tend to accumulate a lot of things in this bag that I don't necessarily need. And in this case, I may also be missing some items, so we're just going to go through it and see what happens. All right, so the first thing we got in here is Z-Pax Possum Gloves. So these gloves will be essential in the winter just to keep my hands warm while I'm hiking and around camp. They're really light. I think they only weigh one or two ounces and they are also really warm. So the next thing I have in this bag is some various cords. So this cord right here is what I'll use to charge my battery bank, my Zolio, and then the Insta360 camera if I do decide to take it with me. This charger right here is what I'll use to charge my phone and I'll probably get a better one before I go. And then this is the charger that I use to charge my watch and that is one thing I forgot to mention. Just really quick, this is my Garmin Phoenix 6. It is a GPS watch and a fitness tracker so if I want to I can record my hikes on the trail and it also just keeps track of things like my heart rate, my steps, calories burned, all that type of information. You definitely don't need a watch like this on the trail but I do think it is nice to have some type of watch. The only reason I'm taking this watch with me is because I wear it every day and it also has a really long battery life so when I charge this watch it can last up to nine days. Back to the bag of miscellaneous items. So to go along with those chargers I have a, um, I think this is Anchor. And it's really nice because it can charge two items at a time so that saves me a little bit of time in town. I also have a little bottle of wilderness wash and Dr. Bronner's soap pretty much does the same thing. But this soap basically just allows you to keep your hands clean, which is really important when it comes to preventing norovirus. And it also allows you to wash your clothes if you need to while on the trail. I remember one time I was staying at a hotel in Gatlinburg last year and they didn't have laundry, so I basically just washed out my clothes in the sink with this. Now this soap is biodegradable, but it's really important to still use leave no trace practices while you're out on the trail. And never use this soap close to a water source. All right, so next we have quilt straps. Um, so these are three straps that I have for my UGQ quilt. And we will talk about that quilt in just a little bit. So I'm just gonna put these to the side. I also have my headlamp. Um, this is a black diamond headlamp. I don't remember how many lumens it is, but it is pretty bright. It also has a red light, which is really important so that you don't wake up other people at camp. I really do like this headlamp, but the biggest downsides to it is that it does take batteries, so I do carry extra batteries with me. And then also it's kind of heavy. Um, there are definitely headlamps on the market that are a lot lighter than this. But this is what I have, and unless I just decide to get a new one, I'm going to continue using it. So I also have some hand warmers in here. Um, I don't like to use these regularly, but I do find that they're a nice backup on the trail if you start getting cold. There were a lot of times on the trail last year where I was sleeping really cold at night and I would put one or two of these in my quilt with me and it would make a huge difference. I may only carry one of these instead of two when I start the trail, but I do think they're a pretty nice thing to have. I also have toothbrush and toothpaste. This one's pretty obvious, don't need to talk about that. So this is my hairbrush mirror combo. I used this on the Appalachian Trail last year and it worked perfectly. 
Okay, so this is my first aid kit, and I'll be honest, I have not opened this since the AT last year, so we're about to find out together what's in here. We have some Tylenol, and we'll definitely add more of those before we leave. We have some allergy medicine. I did not take a single one of these on the trail last year, and I never take allergy medicine, so this is something that I probably will ditch. I got some alcohol wipes, once again, something that I never used at all on the trail last year, but also weighs nothing, so I'll probably carry them, but probably don't need them. Have some aqua tabs, so I do think these are worth carrying just in case your water filter fails for some reason. And they also kill viruses in water, so not a bad idea to use them if you know that Noro is going around really bad. I have a couple of band-aids. I cannot remember what this is called right now, but this is basically just blister tape. When I started the trail last year, I was getting pretty bad blisters, so I'll probably carry at least one of these sheets with me next year, just in case that happens again. I have some Pepto-Bismol, which you can tell has been through with a ringer. I actually never used Pepto on the trail last year, but I gave it away to people all the time. Pepto is one of those things where you don't really think about it until you need it, and then once you need it, you're really glad you have it. So this is something that I will always carry with me on the trail. I also have some little earplugs, so as you know, there's a lot of noises in the woods, um, snoring, loud sleeping pads, these just make it easier to sleep. I have some tweezers. Um, I did not carry nail clippers just because most hostels had them. So honestly, my first aid kit turned out a little better than I was expecting it to be. So I'll probably just add a couple more Tylenol, um, probably some ibuprofen, and then take out the Benadryl and should be good to go. Stretch break. So continuing on with this bag, I have a little REI camp towel. And fun fact, I actually... Uh, burned a hole in this towel on my very first night on the trail last year. Next is my battery bank. This is the Inu 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. This is not the same exact power bank that I used on the trail last year, but it is an upgraded version of it. So my power bank on the trail last year worked perfectly. I would get between four and five iPhone charges on it. But I did notice that towards the end of the trail, it did start losing some of that power. And I had had that power bank for years before ever stepping foot on the Appalachian Trail, so I figured it was just getting old. So I decided to replace it with the same exact thing, and actually this one is an ounce lighter than the old one, so that's also a benefit. In case you're wondering, this power bank weighed 12.2 ounces when I weighed it on my scale at home. I also have some flushable wipes in here. These were from the trail last year. It's a lot easier than using soap and water to wipe your body down in my opinion, and I also found that a really easy way to save weight when it comes to wet wipes is to actually dry them out before you get on the trail, and then once you're on the trail, just use a little bit of water to rehydrate them. Lastly, I have a few extra batteries because my headlamp takes batteries and I don't want to run out. Alright, so that is it for the junk bag, and honestly, it's pretty heavy. I could definitely cut some weight on some of the objects in here, but um, for now, this is good to go. The next thing I have is my sleeping pad and the pump sack. So last year on the trail, I used the Thermarest Neo Air x Lite women's version. The sleeping pad was awesome because it had a really high R value and it only weighed around 12 ounces. There was a lot of good things about that sleeping pad, but I didn't sleep the best on it because I found it to be a bit uncomfortable and it also was super noisy. So this year I'm going to test out the Nemo Tensor Insulated Sleeping Pad. It does have a slightly lower R value, but it still should be plenty warm enough. And it does weigh more, but I'm hoping adding a few extra ounces will be worth it for better sleep. Now you can blow this sleeping pad up by mouth, and I've done it before, but it takes a ton of work. So I personally prefer to use a pump sack. I bought this Nemo Tensor and slid it off of somebody else who didn't have the pump sack for it. So I made the decision to order one off of REI. And I'll just say this thing is huge and it's kind of ridiculous. I may try to cut a couple ounces from my weight by going on Nemo's website and ordering the pump sack that they make for this air pad. 
But anyways, the way a pump sack works is basically you just attach it to the pad, you fill this bag with air, and then you roll it down. A lot of people don't use pump sacks, but it makes my life easier, and I also don't have to worry as much about a moldy sleeping pad, so it's worth it to me. So next is my pillow. This is the Sea to Summit Aeros Ultralight Pillow. I used the same pillow on the trail last year, and um, it was pretty comfortable, did the job just fine. The only bad thing is I started having a problem with the valve system where when I was trying to blow the pillow up, it was leaking air instead of holding that air in. It was kind of weird because it only happened some of the time and not all of the time. If I have too many problems with it, I will probably replace it. All right, so now we're starting to get into sleep clothing. So to keep my feet warm at night, I have these Enlightened Equipment booties. They are insulated and there are a few times last year where my feet was cold on the trail, so this will definitely help. I also have two extra pair of underwear. Um, I am carrying three pairs of underwear just because last year when I had two, I always wished that I had a third. And then these are my Enlightened Equipment sleep pants. These are also insulated, so it should keep my legs nice and toasty when I'm sleeping at night. And then I have my sleep shirt. So this is an REI brand uh, mid-weight base layer. I used this on the trail last year and I really liked it, so I'm gonna use it again. I have an extra pair of Darn Tough socks and really these are probably the ones that I will be hiking in um, just because they have the AT logo on them and I like that. This is my UGQ custom bandit quilt. This is a 10 degree comfort rated quilt and it weighs around 25 ounces. Last year on the AT I used a 20 degree enlightened equipment quilt and I was a little bit too cold sometimes. So I'm hoping that this quilt will keep me nice and warm and toasty at night. To go with my quilt and to make it just a little bit warmer, I do have a Sea to Summit Reactor Extreme liner, I do believe is what it's called. I believe this sleeping bag liner is supposed to add around 10 to 15 degrees to your sleep system. I'm honestly not convinced that that's true, but regardless, I still do like having a sleeping bag liner just because I feel like it prevents my quilt and my sleeping pad from getting super dirty. All right guys, so I believe that is everything in my backpack. That was a super long video and I'm feeling pretty tired, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. If y'all have any questions about my gear or maybe I forgot to leave some things out, please let me know in the comments. As always, please like and subscribe. It really does help grow the channel. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.